So of course, math is great at finding more efficient ways to write things like that. So we can use the summation sign and we can introduce this uh, index k. k is going to be our counter that counts along the length of our kernel. And so it'll go from minus p to plus p and that will always cover the length of our kernel. So to write this more concisely, for the first element of our result, y sub 0, we take and increment k starting at minus p all the way to plus p. And at each one, we multiply x sub minus k times w sub k. So the very first element would be x sub minus minus p or x sub p times w sub minus p. So you can go through element by element in the equations we just wrote out longhand and see how these line up. The one thing that is different about these is if you keep going, you'll see here by the time k is equal to p, we're multiplying x sub minus p times w sub p. x isn't defined at minus p, it's only defined at 0 through m minus 1. So we have to add the footnote anytime we try to access an x index that's outside that range, we just assume x equals 0. So really x extends to plus and minus infinity. It's at 0 for most of that, but between indexes 0 and m minus 1, that's when it's interesting. And we can repeat that then for the next position of the result, y sub 1 and y sub 2, etc., all the way up to the last position, y sub m. And if we want to, we can take, and instead of explicitly counting through all the positions of our signal, we can use the index j and just say, hey, for any position j between 0 and m minus 1, we can use this expression. So y sub j is equal to the sum of x sub j minus k times w sub k. And in each of those summations, k goes from minus p to p. So this is the beautifully short way to write all of this that we wrote out longhand the first time. So math is beautiful, exhibit 556.